Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew, and my name is Anna. And you're listening to the Culips English podcast. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Culips. This is Chatterbox, which is the Culips series for intermediate and advanced English learners that features natural conversations between native speakers about an interesting topic. Today, I'm joined by my co-host Anna. Hey there, Anna. How are you? I'm great, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing fantastic as well, Anna. And I think we have a good episode for everyone here today. We are going to talk about life hacks. Yes, something I'm really obsessed with at the moment. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of my favorite ones. Yeah, me too. I have some life hacks that I'll share with you and the listeners, and I can't wait to find out what your life hacks are as well, Anna. Perhaps they might just change my life. I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> But before we get to our conversation, we should let everyone know about the transcript and study guide that's available for this episode. For all Culips members, and following along with the guide while you listen, everyone is really the best way to study with this episode. And by becoming a Culips member, you'll not only support us and keep allowing us to make English lessons for people all over the world, but you will have a toolkit that will help you to improve your English communication skills. So, to become a member and to get the study guide, just visit our website, Culips.com. We also wanted to give a shout out to our listener Sarah from Castbox, who left us a lovely review, and you said hi. I like your podcast very much. It's super useful and full of new things! Exclamation mark. The variety of topics makes it easy to learn, and you never get tired of listening. Thank you so much. Well, thank you to you, Sarah. That's a lovely review. Yeah, thank you so much for that review, Sarah. I agree, variety is the spice of life, and that's why we try to just come up with a bunch of different episode topics for all of our listeners, so that they can stay motivated when listening to us. So we really do appreciate that feedback. And listeners, if you could help us out by leaving us a positive review and a five star rating on Apple Podcast or whatever platform you use. To listen to Culips, that would really help us out and allow more English language learners from around the world connect and study with us. And even if your podcast app doesn't have a rate or review option, then you could always hit the like button or subscribe to us on that app. That would go a long way as well. All right. Anna, all of the business is out of the way, so I think we can get on to today's topic, and we're going to chat about life hacks. And I think probably the best place to start is by defining what a life hack is, because probably this expression is new to some of our listeners. So could you break it down for us, Anna? What exactly is a life hack? Life hack. I guess the first thing to say is this is an informal. Expression or a term which has kind of appeared over the last few years, and a hack is something which makes you achieve something easier or quicker or more efficiently.、Mm -hmm. So a life hack is just something that makes your life easier, quicker. Maybe it makes you more efficient, more productive, more economical. Any of those things can be considered a life hack. And of course, life hack has many different categories. We can talk about cooking, technology, beauty. There's many different types of hacks. Hacks about anything that can make your life easier. Like you said, it's almost like a shortcut, right? Just a better way to do something that、uh, will result in you being more productive or more organized or something like that. It will have a good result. At the moment, I'm obsessed. So I'm as I get older. I like to be very efficient and very productive, and I get like a lot of satisfaction out of things being very efficient. Like I, I really love that in my personal life, actually more than <laughs> more than in my professional life. But I just love organizing things. I love finding, for example, the perfect box to put something in. I just love it. So I've been obsessed with watching life hack videos on YouTube and learning about little tricks. 
that other people use to make their lives a little bit more efficient. Most of the life hacks that you watch then, are they about staying organized and being organized like in your life or business or what kind of hacks are they exactly? Yeah, so some of them are about learning ways to do things that perhaps you never knew. I'm going to give you a typical example, okay? Sure. I was watching a video that said most people use bin bags incorrectly. So most people, you take a bin bag, you open it, you put it on the bin. But actually, this is inside out. Oh, really? Okay. You have to turn the bin bag inside out. You have to put it on top of the bin and then push it in. And I hadn't realized that my whole life I was using bin bags inside out. Not really a life hack, I have to say. It doesn't really make my life much easier, much more efficient. But now I'm doing or I'm using bin bags the correct way. So this is an example of a less useful life hack, I would say. It's almost like a life lesson. A life lesson, exactly. I love that though. Yeah, I never knew it, um, that I was using bin bags the wrong way. I was like, I had absolutely no idea. And also I was using tin foil, the way that you rip tin foil in the packets. I was also doing that wrong as well. So I learn about all these funny things as well on these videos, but I also like learning about productivity hacks. But I think for those types of things, it's super personal. I don't know about you, Andrew, but I find those types of things, it's really difficult to have one rule for everybody because mm. everybody has a very different life, different job, different ways to be productive. So how do you, what are your life hacks for being more productive? I'd love to know. I'd love to know that. Well, I'll get to those in just a sec. But before we move on, I just wanted to take a step back for a second because I love how you used the expression bin bag, which is so UK English. In fact, in Canada, we would say garbage bag or trash bag. So I just thought I would point that out to our listeners that that's a big difference between North American English and UK English bin bag and garbage bag or trash bag. So I have to give a shout out to a YouTube channel that I just randomly came across one day, uh, actually on the Culips YouTube channel. I was doing some maintenance of the channel, uploading a video or something, and I got recommended uh, a channel and I can't remember exactly what the video was, but it must have appealed to me in some way because I clicked on it and it was by a channel called The Bliss Bean, B-L-I-S-S-B-E-A-N. And uh, The Bliss Bean channel is actually run by quite uh, a youngster. I think this <laughs> channel uh, operator, this creator, is maybe a high school student or just entering into university. Um, but her channel is amazing and it's all about uh, staying organized. She runs her own small business and uh, her YouTube channel is fairly successful as well. So she's, you know, a busy person. So she has lots of advice about uh, staying organized, running a YouTube channel, just productivity hacks in general. So I would highly recommend her YouTube channel for anyone that wants like tech advice for little shortcuts or apps that you can use um, that will help your workflow. I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny that I was taking all this advice from such a young person, like since she was a high school student. <laughs> but I've learned so many good things from the Bliss Bean, so I can't uh, write her off. Uh, I'm actually very thankful for what I've learned on her channel. That sounds like my kind of channel. Yeah, actually... I think these days she's in Spain, Anna. I think she just moved oh. to Spain, as far as I know. I haven't kept up to date with the channel a lot recently, but yeah, maybe you'll see her walking around on the streets of Spain. I don't know. Ooh, she can give me some coaching, uh, my productivity coaching or, or something or something like this. I think for me, in terms of productivity, none of the hacks that I use, for example, are very revolutionary. You know, they're not very techy. The one thing... I would say I've found a system that I really like. It's like a note-taking platform. People take notes, they have agendas um, in many different ways. In fact, I don't really use an agenda. I mean, a calendar, like a, a, a typical email calendar like most people have. Um, I have my schedule there, but I don't really use it. The, I actually really have everything in my head. I'm very good at remembering everything. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure how I do that, but... Um, I never forget anything if I have like a specific time or, well, I say never, I don't want to 
put myself to that, but I'm very good at remembering my schedule. Um, and then I use like a note taking platform to manage my week. So I always manage on a week basis and I try to think about what I have to do the night before. That is a huge hack because then you wake up, you know what you've got to do. You don't waste time thinking about, oh, what have I got to do today? Or you've got an idea of what you're doing for the week. And it just helps me be way more focused and not waste any of my time or not waste as much time. Of course, everybody wastes time. It's impossible not to really, but that I find. That and also getting up early. That is the biggest one for me is waking up early. Get up early, get the things done in the morning and you've won or you've gained two hours, especially for teachers like us, Andrea, I'm sure you'll, we, you know, we, we work a lot. So you have to make the most of like whatever time you have. And I find the morning is just perfect for doing work. So I like to get up early. Yeah, Anna, I completely agree with you. We're totally on the same page there. I also love waking up early in the morning and I find for studying or working, it's my most productive time of the day. If I can knock out a few hours of work in the morning before my wife and dog wake up, then I've won the day. Like you said, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Former guest on Qlips, Matt versus Japan, he runs his own YouTube channel about language learning. I learned a great life hack from him. I don't know if this works on Android phones or only iPhones. I happen to use an iPhone, so it works perfectly for me. But it comes down to getting to sleep early at night, uh, which ties into your points of waking up early in the morning. Because if you want to wake up early in the morning to work, you have to go to bed early at night. So what I learned from Matt versus Japan was uh, about setting time limits on your iPhone. So at 11 p.m. at night, all of my apps shut down. So I, I think there's only one or two apps that I allow to stay open. I think my phone, so if somebody calls me, but it's not just anybody. If my wife calls me or my parents call me, it will come through, but I think everybody else is blocked after 11 p.m. And maybe I have one app I can't remember my email or something. So if I get an email after 11 p.m., it's okay. But every other app is closed down. Now, it's not completely closed down, but it's just annoying to open it back up. Like I get this pop-up and I have to click through some other things to open it up. So on uh, weekdays, usually, actually from Sunday evening until Thursday evening, Everything shuts down at 11, and I find that really helps me to put my phone down and go to bed uh, so I'm not just wasting time in the evening. And another life hack for iPhone users, I'll share another one that I've learned from YouTube. I don't know who taught me this one, but that's where I learned it, was that if you take your iPhone and you hit the volume up button three times, uh, it will turn your phone screen to a black and white display. So it will take all of your color off of your screen and turn it to grayscale. And that is really good for when you're just like wasting time on Instagram and mindlessly flicking through photos. Because if you take away the color, suddenly images are not very interesting to look at. And so occasionally I'll do that. I'll just turn it on grayscale and it gets boring and I put my phone down and then I'll go and do something else. Hopefully the thing that I do is more productive than just wasting time on social media. But those are my two saving time hacks so that you can go to sleep earlier and then ultimately wake up earlier in the morning. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. You've got to go to bed early, but I had no idea about the grayscale one. That's fantastic. Well, I'm stealing that because I think these are really the most important life hacks because, you know, you can do your best during the day. You're not tired. One thing I do with my phone, because I have a bad habit that I developed during the quarantine, which was looking at my phone at night and I got into a really bad habit and I said, okay, enough. So I put a limit Well, I'm, I'm trying, I'm working on it. So after, after 11 o'clock, the plan is not to use any technology, not my laptop, not my phone. And I actually bought a little box. It's like a little black box. And I put my phone inside that black box. And this is actually something I learned from a really amazing channel, which is called The Minimalists. Okay. There are two guys, they're super famous. They have a podcast and they're very well known, but they talk about how to kind of live your life in a, in a minimalist way, trying to 
to not be too focused on technology, trying to give yourself some time away from your phone. And one of the things they, one of the guys recommended is like physically putting your phone in a place like a, a box or um, on a shelf somewhere so that it's just like a, I don't know, I think it's just mentally it's in a different place. And that's actually worked quite well for me. And also buying an alarm clock rather than using my phone as an alarm so that I don't have to have my phone next to me when I'm sleeping. So I, I set my alarm clock so that it wakes me up and my phone is in another place. Because I think that was one of the reasons why I kept my phone with me close to my bed is because it was my alarm. And so it was more tempting to pick it up. So that's one thing that's working well for me. But I mean, I have many hacks. I'm going to mention another one actually. One of my biggest life hacks, which I've developed in the last few months is always having reserves of things. I never like to run out of like my favorite beauty product or mouthwash or like, I, I hate that. I hate running out when you're at home and you're like, oh, so I have like a beautifully organized drawer with like all of my reserves. So as soon as I use something, I have another one to, to use. I just love it. It makes me feel so happy that I have these reserve things. I don't overstock. Okay. You're not a hoarder. I'm not a hoarder, but I just love to have like an extra set of the things I like face cream, soap, toothbrushes. Like, oh, I just, I just love it. I get so much. So that's a life hack for me because you're never, you never have that situation where you're like, oh my God, I ran out of toothpaste or, you know, and it's really, really annoying. Milk as well. I, I stock milk because <laughs> I, I always run out of milk and I hate it. So now I have this little like, section in my kitchen to store milk. Yeah, a bit weird, but yeah. That's like a money saving tip as well. I don't do that really. Sometimes I do. I'll buy in bulk and keep things on hand, but our apartment here in Seoul is pretty small, so it's a little bit challenging to do that, but I totally know what you mean when you run out of something that in that moment you usually just uh, maybe go to a convenience store or just buy one quickly to restock it and you end up spending more money. And me personally, this last week, uh, I was too busy to go grocery shopping. And my wife was also too busy to go grocery shopping. We had a crazy week. We were super busy. And so our house, we kind of ran out of groceries. We didn't have any food in the house. And when that happens, I really hate it because then we start making unhealthy food choices were like way more likely to go to a restaurant or just to go to the store and grab something that's pre-prepared to eat or order delivery or something like that. So we finally went grocery shopping today. We restocked. But yeah, I think that's a great tip just in general is like have enough supplies on hand so you don't run out because when you run out, you spend money and you make bad decisions and uh, it's just not good. No, not good. I don't know why I developed that recently. It's like only in the past few months, but I just love it, especially with beauty products. Cause I just, I hate running out of like my favorite creams or anything like that. So I've got my little drawer all organized. And another thing that I really like to organize is my recycling because I've also become completely crazy about recycling. So I actually measured, we have like a small space in the kitchen and I measured it exactly. And I bought these like three boxes, which fit, perfectly in this space so that we can recycle properly um because it used to really irritate me that we weren't recycling or um I don't know what the recycling's like in in Korea but you know we have to separate paper and glass and and plastic and it was just a bit of a mess and this is a bit of a life hack because it means that we can recycle efficiently and I just bought these little bags and they're different colors so it's really easy to see which where you need to recycle I think my flatmates thought I was a little bit crazy but if you don't recycle properly, sometimes they check the bins and they give your flat building a a fine, you know, and then everyone gets really annoyed because they're like, who hasn't been recycling properly? So they'll thank me later when we don't have any fines. <laughs> now, we have a very similar system in South Korea where we have to separate everything and organize by the kind of recycling, like glass and plastic and paper and styrofoam and et cetera, et cetera. But we have an area outside of our building and we can just put it down there uh, any old time. So usually every time my wife or I 
leave and maybe we have you know a cardboard box or something to throw out we'll just leave it down there on our way out of the building what about you do you have that kind of system where you live as well or do you have to put it out on a specific day of the week yeah we have like a specific day and we have to do it after eight o'clock and it's kind of similar but we have specific times but I'm just really glad that now we can do it efficiently and it's very productive and it's not messy I hate messy bins so Anna, I have one more question here for you about life hacks before we wrap this episode up. And that is, you know, these days we've name dropped a lot of different YouTube channels and creators that talk about life hacks. And we both talked about how we've watched content on life hacks on YouTube and uh, it's just exploding in popularity. So my question for you is, why do you think this is? Why do you think people are making so much content about life hacks on social media? And why do you think we're so hooked on learning about these hacks? Why are they so interesting uh, to us as viewers? I think partly because we just have less and less time. We're always trying to fit more into our schedules, do more, learn more, work more. So the time that we have really to do the day-to-day -day things is, is shrinking, I think, little by little. So I think we're always looking for for ways to be more efficient. And I think it is just that thing coming back to what I said, it's satisfying. Things that are efficient and productive, it's just you get a satisfaction from it that is just like, I don't know. I think that's why people are kind of a little bit addicted to learning different life hacks because it just makes you feel good. Like I feel good if I'm productive. Like I'm like, go me. Like that was good, you know? I think that maybe, maybe is why people people like it, that sense of satisfaction and doing something well. I think in my case, it might be almost procrastination, ironically, because I feel like if I'm watching a life hack video or I'm learning about a new way to do something, it's kind of like I'm working. It's kind of like I'm being productive, right? So I can tell myself like, oh yeah, you're working. You're like learning this new, new way to do something more effectively. So I can kind of lie to myself. But at the same time, if I were to just do the work that I have to do, then that would ultimately probably be more productive at the end of the day. So I, I don't know, maybe in my case, I, I procrastinate a little bit by watching this kind of content. So I have to be careful with myself not to get too into it or too addicted uh, because I think, you know, these productivity hacks might ultimately end up being time-wasting hacks. And I want to avoid that for sure. That's an interesting point of view. I see what you mean. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Yes. That's just me. I have a kind of addictive personality, especially uh, when I start going down a YouTube rabbit hole. It can be dangerous, but <laughs> Anna, you shared some great hacks. Uh, thank you for telling us all about the ones that you have incorporated into your life. And I would love to hear from our listeners as well to hear what they have to say. I'm sure uh, there are some of our listeners out there who are interested in life hacks and maybe who have some great ones to share with us. I know there are a lot of hacks about language learning and English learning specifically as well. So guys, if you have any tips or hacks about uh, productivity or staying organized or learning English more efficiently, or studying better, any of those things, drop us a line and share them with us. Our email address is contact at culips.com and we would certainly love to hear from you. If you enjoy Qlips and find us helpful for building your English language skills, then we would love it if you could support us. There are several ways that you can do that. The best way is by signing up to become a Qlips member on our website, qlips.com. But that's not the only way. You can also follow us on social media, tell your friends who are learning English to check us out, and to leave us a five-star rating and a nice review on Apple Podcast, CastBox, or whichever application you use to listen to Qlips. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, and we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everyone. See you later.